third place, definition. A communal place in between home and work meant for socialization and fun. Do you ever find yourself stuck in the loop? You know, the one where you wake up, go to work, go home, sleep, repeat. Wake up, go to work, go home, sleep. 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 Wake up, go to work, go up, go to work, go home, sleep. Go to work, go home, sleep. Once you're in it, it feels like there's no way out. In the United States, third places are not common like they are in other places of the world. Sure, you can go to a coffee shop, a bar, or a library, but try and feel part of the community all humans crave deep down. But in most areas of the US, people live by a stranger danger mindset. Creating and living in communities large or small is how humans were able to progress and be where we are today. Longing for a community isn't just a passing feeling, it's ingrained into our natural instincts. So how has tabletop gaming changed everything? As we all know, COVID ruined our social lives and batteries. Gone were the days of shopping with your friends, seeing a movie on the big screen, or grabbing a coffee at your favorite cafe. As if us gamers didn't already spend enough time in front of our monitors playing online games, we now relied on these online games and Discord servers to give us the social interaction that we no longer had. So when a game like Among Us, a game where you could play with up to 10 players that was rich in hilarious social interaction, of course it blew up. People were getting bored of silently staring at their computer screens on a Zoom call, trying to find anything to talk about with their friends, but nobody had anything interesting to talk about. We were all stuck in our homes. But Among Us wasn't the only game that helped solve this awkward Zoom silence. Dungeons & Dragons currently has more players and a wider reach than it ever had. What better way to spend all of this time you now have on your hands than to adventure into an imaginary world where you're role-playing with your friends as wizards, bards, and barbarians, not people stuck in a two-year-long lockdown. D&D was an incredibly easy game for people to start playing over Zoom calls, and even though the pandemic has been over for a while now, we all know that once you're into D&D, there's no getting out. Spell Table, which is an online way to play Magic the Gathering with your friends, was released in April of 2020, right after the pandemic began. It catered specifically to the four-player commander format of Magic. Spell Table is still heavily used to this day for playing online Magic with friends and has helped connect Magic players from all over the world. But why is any of this important? Well, even though games like Among Us, D&D over Zoom, Spell Table, and many other multiplayer online games brought people together online during COVID. After the lockdown ended, many people, including myself, were longing to feel a part of a community and not an online one. It took a pandemic for many people to realize that being connected with other humans who all had a common interest was important to them. And although the video game community is great, it is incredibly vast, and it mostly exists online with the exception of a few conventions that happen every year. Tabletop gaming, however, is inherently a social pastime meant to gather people around, well, a tabletop, forcing people to spend quality time with each other in person. Tabletop gaming has changed the way humans interact with each other and is more popular than ever, and D&D has a well-performing movie to prove it. Magic the Gathering has more people attending the MagicCon conventions every year, along with getting love from well-known celebrities like Post Malone and Joe Manganiello. Henry Cavill is teaming up with Amazon and Games Workshop to bring the Warhammer 40k universe to life in a 
cinematic universe, and Pokemon? Well, Pokemon has always and forever will be a widely loved and gigantic franchise. But how is all of this possible? It seems like not long ago, magic was for nerds, D&D was for geeks, and Warhammer, well, Warhammer was for the mentally insane. Or was it? The tabletop gaming communities have grown largely due to the fact that things only nerds used to like are finally becoming cool to mainstream media. Things like anime and video games grew incredibly popular a few years ago and are now just part of pop culture, and in a sense, have paved the way for tabletop gaming to now have its renaissance. But there are a few things that tabletop gaming have over binge watching 1000 episodes of One Piece or playing the same Mario Party mini games for the one billionth time, and those things are interaction and community. I love my siblings, and growing up my older sister, younger brother and I would all play board games like Shoots and Ladders, Hi Ho Cheerio, The Game of Life, Hungry Hungry Hippos, and of course, the iconic board game Pretty Pretty Princess. The chaotic and hilarious memories I have of playing these games with them are some of my fondest. Eventually, the Nintendo DS came out, and we were all fortunate enough that my parents got one for each of us. Video games only got better and better as time passed, and inevitably those board games we used to play just became space taken up in our closet. The way my family and many families would spend time together quickly became watching TV, movies, and maybe playing video games, but the same party games we've been playing for years are only fun for so long. And during these pastimes, for the most part, there is no talking. And sure, quiet time just enjoying each other's company can be great, but not when it's all the time. I began to miss playing board games, but at this point I was 21 and wanted to find a way I could connect with my family more. Magic the Gathering was something I had always wanted to try, but was intimidated to commit to learning. In winter of 2021, I was home from college for Christmas break, I was just gifted my first commander deck, and there was a winter storm happening. My partner and I had the most chaotic and hilarious time trying to learn how to play a commander deck with one deck and wanted to teach my two brothers. My mom, being the adventurer she is, drove us out to the nearest GameStop to buy commander decks for everyone, and we spent every waking moment the following three days learning and playing commander while it snowed outside. These three days are some of the best memories I have. Now, playing Magic the Gathering and other tabletop games like Disney Lorcana, Flesh and Blood, and even Warhammer are a part of every visit to my parents' house. Playing these tabletop games with my partner and siblings bring the warmth back of my childhood and has truly brought us closer together as a family. The in-person interactions you have with your friends, family, or people you've never met at a local game store are something you just can't get from playing games online. My husband and I are huge video game fans, and when I asked him to play Magic the first time, he said, why would I play with cardboard when I have a PS5? And now he gets it, and I get it too. At the beginning of this video, I discussed what a third place was and why it is important for our social health. Unfortunately, many people are deprived of this luxury. If I went and said hi to someone random at a coffee shop, they would likely look at me like I'm crazy. And I personally can't say I wouldn't feel alarmed if someone random said hi to me for no reason other than to talk. But that's just a product of the world we live in today. It's become so hard to connect with other humans, and making friends as an adult can feel impossible. It wasn't until I decided to start going to local game stores, Magic the Gathering events, and other nerdy conventions that I realized it didn't need to be hard or impossible. Tabletop gaming can't happen without people gathering around a tabletop and playing. That's why it's called Magic the Gathering. It is an inherently social pastime that makes it easy to make new friends and have fun. Local game stores are so important when it comes to fostering tabletop communities, and there are so many more game stores than you might think. You've probably passed by one multiple times where you live and just didn't know it. 
Aim stores, of course, sell board games, card games, and other tabletop gaming accessories, but a lot of them also hold events that are meant for people to join and meet others or to teach you how to play D&D or magic. And some of them even have restaurants and bars that add to the experience of having fun in a game store. Local game stores very quickly became my third place, along with conventions like Command Fest, Magicon, Evo, and Comic-Con. Chatting with other community members about our shared interest in the games we play in between matches, grabbing a bite to eat, or enjoying a drink with my partner while opening card packs are just a few of the ways I enjoy being in a local game store. And more and more people are starting to find these hidden gems in their area and enjoy them too. Taking time to be away from your responsibilities at work and at home is so important, and having a community where you feel welcomed and wanted is a breath of fresh air that I hope everyone gets to experience. Now I know what you might be thinking, Mel, don't most nerdy communities have a history with being toxic? And I'm here to let you know that there is a truth and a lie within that statement. Yes, there are toxic people in online forums and even in local game stores or events. The world is big and we can't control what kind of people decide to like the same hobby we do. But just like you weed your garden to keep it healthy, tabletop communities have been weeding their space to create a more healthy and welcoming environment. As a woman in a male-dominated hobby, I have faced toxic comments and sexism on multiple occasions. But over the years, those occurrences have happened less and less, and pale in comparison to the amount of positivity and love that these communities are capable of. There will always be the loud 10% of people in gaming communities who post hate online just because they can. But there is a much larger and much more loving 90% of these communities who love their hobby and can't wait to share it with you. My life has never been the same after I played my first game of Magic. It led me to rolling my first d20, painting my first Warhammer minifigure, and obviously to many, many more games of Magic the Gathering. But in a shocking turn of events, it also led me to my third place, my home away from home, to a community that accepts me for who I am and one that I can rely on when I need support or distraction from my everyday troubles. And who knows, maybe it can for you too. Maybe you have the world building skills to be a D&D dungeon master and just haven't tapped into them yet. Maybe you become an expert commander deck builder or find peace in painting Warhammer minis in your downtime. Maybe you'll fall so in love with tabletop gaming and its community that you spend your days making YouTube videos about just how much you love them and how they've changed your life and many other people's lives for the better. I guess you'll just have to give tabletop games a try and find out for yourself. But if you've made it this far in the video, I'm sure I'll be seeing you around the tabletop soon.